oh man, the Wright brothers are just so cool with like how they invented flying and stuff. Nobody expects a historical inquisition. My chief weapons are fear, surprise, and an almost fanatical devotion to the facts. The Wright brothers were undoubtedly brilliant inventors, successfully performing the world's first engine-operated aeroplane flight. But like Rudolf Diesel, they were just standing on the shoulders of giants, building on the work of those who had gone before them. Science and invention isn't a sprint to the finish line, it's a relay race, where each runner who passes the baton to the next is just as important as the one who crosses the line. The Wright brothers, it could be argued, could not have made their plane if it hadn't have been for the groundbreaking work of Sir George Cayley, who discovered the very principles of flight itself. There are four scientific forces at work during flight. Now, I've got to be honest, I only got a B in physics, so I'm not really sure how it works, so I'll keep it simple. The first is weight. This is the force pulling the plane down to Earth as it's flying, because of gravity. The opposite of this is lift which is the air underneath the plane as it's moving through the air, keeping it afloat. There's drag, which is the air resistance generated as it's moving through the air. And the opposite of that is thrust, which is the power pushing it through the air, generated in this case by the propellers and the engine. Now, Sir George Cayley, who was born in Scarborough in 1773, discovered these forces in the late 18th and early 19th century, which led him to make a groundbreaking discovery about flight. Before then, people were obsessed with the idea of flying like birds. Now, this makes sense, as birds are one of the few things in the natural world which fly, but it meant that, like Icarus, people would strap wings to their arms and then try flap themselves into flight before inevitably falling to earth and dying or becoming severely injured. There were a few individuals who managed to glide a short distance, but they could never have proper sustained flight because they weren't generating enough or any lift or thrust, which is crucial for keeping you in the sky. Cayley rather succinctly summarised his problem in his 1809 paper on aerial navigation, in which he wrote, the whole problem is confined within these limits, viz, to make a surface support a given weight by the application of power to the resistance of air. Basically, you need to find out a way of generating lift so it can balance out weight and thrust so it can balance out drag. As early as 1799, he engraved a design onto a silver disc for a self-powered aircraft. This design was for a fixed wing craft with a fuselage and tail and flapping wings to generate the forces required. Though the flapping wing idea is quite impractical, this demonstrates a huge leap forward in the understanding of flight. Rather than just trying to replicate birds by flapping our arms, instead he was trying to generate the forces required for flight themselves. In 1804, he successfully flew a glider which was built using the principles he had discovered and follows roughly the same design as later aeroplanes. This was the first recorded fixed wing glider flight. He continued improving and developing his gliders, eventually adding what's called a dihedral angle. It just means that the wings are tilted slightly upwards instead of being completely horizontal as it makes for a more stable flight. Cayley's most famous machine is this 1853 glider, which was flown near his home at Brompton Dale, near Scarborough. This is 54 years before the Wright brothers' flight. This machine flew 900 feet and was the first recorded heavier-than-air adult fixed-wing flight. Though he didn't invent the internal combustion engine, he was aware that something like it needed to exist, that it would be perfect for generating the forces required for flight. And so, in 1903, when Wilbur and Orville Wright strapped an engine and propeller to their plane and took it to the sky, they were finalising the work which George Cayley had developed for decades all that time before.
We can see that the history of science and inventions is a complex and fascinating one. And though it's easy to remember the people who put the finishing touches on the cake, the Wright brothers and Rudolf Diesels and Crick Watsons of the world, we should always trace the entire history so we can get a fuller, more colourful picture of how this crucial piece of technology came into existence. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, I hope you've learnt something new, and hope to see you again soon!